Greg Chick, Ramona's Farmer here for DIYPlumbingAdvice.com. I'd like to talk about rainwater. How much do you need? How much can you get off of how much roof area? How much do you need to store? If you're talking about water for a little tomato patch or a small garden, 55 gallon drums are probably appropriate. If you're talking about a landscape uh, around a house with, with plenty of plants, you're, you're talking about collecting water of thousands of gallons. So this is a thousand gallon tank. I've got four of these, one at each corner of my house here. That's for every thousand square feet, you get 623 gallons of rainwater per inch of rain. So if you have 10 inches of rain in San Diego, you can have 18,000 gallons in a year's time. I filled up these tanks early in the season and I overflowed uh, on almost every rain event. Let's get specific. We have here, first off, we have a caution non-potable water do not drink sticker on all tanks. Next we have the downspout from the gutter coming over, dumping into the top of what's called a leaf eater. This, this screen right here is at a 45 degree angle. It catches all the big debris and the incoming rainwater kind of keeps it clean, washes it off. You, you keep the lint out of this or the small debris, you know, periodically. That water then comes down here, goes down the side, a couple gallons of volume, and what happens is there's a cap at the bottom of this, and you're not putting this water into the tank, you're filling up the tank called the first flush. You see, bird poop and everything on the roof is, is not what you want in your tank. So what we do is we have a first flush, it goes down here, a little ball of floats to the top, it gets to the top and this T right here has a fitting in it. The ball seals up against that. After you've done the first flush, the next rainwater is forced to go into the tank. That's how you keep the, uh, the, the first flush debris off of the roof. Then, once the tank fills up, there is an overflow which comes out this pipe onto the ground and the ground is pitched off to a safe place for the rainwater where the spout normally used to go before the system was put in. Every tank needs mosquito protection, even if it's just a simple stainless steel screen soldered together on the inlet of the tank. Even a gap the size of this right around the inlet to this tank needs to be sealed. They make uh, grommets for that and you just put the grommet around there and it sealed it. And if the mosquitoes do get in, you can use some mosquito dunk that you can find at your regular hardware store. So what do we do with all this water? Well, there's a couple of ways you, you can use rainwater. One is you can just take it off the bottom of the tank with a, with a hose threaded ball valve I have there. Gravity pressure will, will put water into a bucket, uh, out of the hose, into pots, uh, anywhere you want. Another way to use it, if you need to use the water at a higher elevation or you want it in a nice fast flow, I have a booster pump that I suck out of the bottom of the tank push out of there and I can run sprinklers, I can run drip systems, I can run anything I want. I could power wash the sidewalk if I chose to. Um, but the different ways to use the, the, the rainwater is determines uh, how you, what, what kind of system you have, how much if you have a pump or if you just use gravity. So how are these tanks hooked together? There's a couple ways they are and a couple ways you use the water. Here we have the outlet of the tank at the bottom. There's two hose bibs. One has a hose connected to it going over to the other tank. That tank has a hose bib at the bottom which I can either close or open. With it open, these two tanks will equalize. Or with it closed, I can suck this tank dry and leave that tank full. But then if I want to refill half of this tank with the water from there, I open that one, open this one, and this tank will get the water from the other tank. Now the other hose bib is connected to a uh, suction hose that goes to this pump. That suction hose comes around here. I have a screen here. This is a typical uh, Y strainer used in drip irrigation. It's uh, about 100 mesh, uh, 20 bucks or something. I have a check valve here because that's a good thing to have on a pump inlet. I have the pump here with the automatic control here, which is an on-demand control. 
That means that if I open the hose bib, the pump turns on. If I close the hose bib, the pump continues to run for 30 seconds. It senses no water is flowing. It automatically shuts off and waits for you to open the bib again. This is a water meter. I got this online. It measures in either gallons or cubic feet, whichever type of meter you buy. And I have it hooked in, in line here, so I can measure on a yearly basis or however I want to the water that I've captured and the water that I've used through this meter. This is just a simple hose bib that I use to turn on to take the water out of here. Now when this system is plugged in to an, a regular household outlet, this pump can be charged and I can move this pump from this location by unscrewing it here, moving it over to another tank, screwing that suction line on to the hose bib at the base of the tank and using this pump at another tank. Or I can use this pump and instead of using the hose to push water out on the landscape, I take this hose and I run it 250 feet all the way up the hill and I have a 5,000 gallon rain tank, rain storage tank, the size of five of these, that I fill that up so that it make room in this tank for the next rain event. And then as I'm using the water, I just let that water gravity feed down and I use it on the yard as I need. This year, I ran out of water uh, on October 1st, which is just a couple days ago, and that happens to be the uh, beginning fiscal year for rainwater catchment. It begins on October 1st and goes all the way around the year to uh, September 31st. But uh, the beginning of this year, we're already in, in, in the next year of rain catchment, and I'm sure I will be filling up these tanks and overflowing many times. Since there's only 4,500 gallons of storage down there in my uh, surge tanks, when those get full, I pump it up the hill through a simple garden hose that goes into this line, into this valve with this open. This tank fills up. You got 5,000 gallons of surge that I can take out of those. Now, when you're sizing a system, you size for the deficit. The deficit being if it doesn't rain for six months where you are, then you need six months of rainwater tank storage. So that's sizing for the deficit. So this here is 5,000 gallons, which would last most people quite a while. The size of this tank may be 5,000 gallons, and the size of this entire system may be large, but it is not complex. This is something that can be a DIY uh, uh, system. This is just connected with garden hoses. You just have to know that if the one tank is higher, you're going to have to pump up to it. But if it's higher, you don't have to pump out of it because it gravity feeds down. Uh, you can take a, a tank like this. If it's 100 feet above the elevation down there, you'll have about 50 psi at the bottom. That's about a half a pound of water pressure per foot of elevation that the tank is above your point of use. Now, as far as the authority having jurisdiction in your town and the codes required in your town, it's smart for any contractor or homeowner to check with that authority having jurisdiction, the city, the county, what have you, to see what their requirements are for if a permit is needed to set a tank or to run a system. A tank like this, 5,000 gallons or smaller, generally does not require an engineer's uh, piece of paper or a permit. Check with your authority, and can you do it? Yes, you can, and I can help. Thanks for watching.